uh, about 12 years ago, I was dating this complicated Jewish woman. And over the course of dating for a year, we broke up five times. And one of the times we broke up was when she called me to say, oh, last night, you know, my friend uh, Nikki came over and, and we hooked up. I just wanted to see what you thought about that. And I was so upset that I just hung up on her immediately and didn't talk to her again for about two months. And she told me later that she she chosen that because she knew she needed to break up with me. She figured she'd never be with me if she wasn't so depressed. A lot of women have told me that. She'd never be with me if they weren't so depressed. And so she just thought it'd be easier for me to deal with if she was like hooked up with a woman instead of a bloke. But uh, she used to she used to date like a uh, big director in Hollywood. And I asked her if she had any you know, feminine liaisons, any sapphic love while she was with this uh, Hollywood director. And she said, oh no, he would never permit that. And so I'm thinking, what kind of, what kind of chump am I? I? I was absolutely devastated to find out about that. It really stung. Like, I can't imagine you know, any bloke could be okay you know, with, his, with his Sheila you know, hooking up with other Sheilas. So I'm listening to this James B. Stewart book unscripted on last days of some of the red star. It's a bloke in it named Pilgrim who has a relationship with a Sheila named Holland. So Holland is engaged to Pilgrim, but unbeknownst to Pilgrim, she's simultaneously engaged to some of the red star the multi-billionaire. Uh, she told Pilgrim that he, she was just his nurse. She'd amassed over oh, this is nice. $20 million. Right, by cook, connecting with Sumner Redstone and basically taking control of his life and separating Sumner from his family. But she was really in love with Pilgrim. But uh, they, were, they went to a doctor in Beverly Hills to have a child together. And uh, Pilgrim said he didn't like, didn't like ejaculating into a paper cup. And the doctor said, oh, I can just put a needle into your gonads and extract the sperm that way just like I did with the old man <laughs> when the doctor said that like he got the evil eye from Holland the woman and so so Pilgrim was a little disturbed to find out that uh, Holland's first child may have been fathered by some of the redstone. And a little later on, our boy Pilgrim is disturbed to find out that uh, his fiance Holland has been you know, hooking out with various women. And he's starting to suspect that she's telling him a lot of lies. Doesn't yet realize that she's, while she's simultaneously engaged with him, she is also engaged some her redstone. So this book is fun, fascinating, salacious. It's a very worthy companion book to Unscripted. That looks a little steep. fun seeing the birds fly by at eye level. Looks like we made it. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're smarter than I was. Ah. I took a tumble. Did you? I did. Yeah. Okay. Good night, mate. They call this the Mount Everest of Los Angeles.
looking at it, Jake. It's Hollywood. The one thing I notice up here, there's no trash, and I haven't encountered any, any antisocial behavior. Like, yeah, your dogs are supposed to be on a leash at all times, which doesn't happen, but where's the trash? Where are the homeless? Where are the drug addicts? Where are the knife fights? There's none of that social dysfunction up here, mate. Good people go hiking, apparently. So, the hiking demographic in LA seems similarly well behaved to the hiking demographic in Sydney. Woo! I'd like to take uh, women up to these kind of views and uh, wrap my arms around them and tell them one day all of this will be ours. So LA's got kind of a subtle, understated beauty. It's not the dramatic beauty of a Sydney or a San Francisco. But yeah, the hiking demographic. See, bloop, fuck, it's equally well behaved in LA, as in Sydney, Australia. Other places, so not a, not a high crime rate here in the canyon. <laughs> 